Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to crochet one of my favorite things. This is the lattice cabled poncho. Let me step back a little bit and the back. This is very fun to make and it's an intermediate project. And let me go ahead and show you what you're going to need. Oh, one more thing, if you've never been to my channel before, if you could please subscribe so that you don't miss any of the other offerings. And if you like this project, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to get notifications, hit the little bell. Okay, let's go ahead and start. For this project, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling. This is 100% um, acrylic, and each scan is 3.5 ounces, 100 grams. 185 yards or 170 meters and this is a worsted weight number four and you can see right across the bottom there I will put how many scans you are going to need for this project. I will also be using the go for faux yarn this is also by Lion Brand and let me see this is 3.5 ounces 100 grams per scan this is 65 yards or 60 meters per scan. This is a bulky size six. Um, and the number of scans that you're going to need, I will put right across the bottom there. I'm also recommending a size I or nine or 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. And I suggest that you have a nice sharp pair of scissors and a yarn needle for hiding the loose ends. And you're also going to need a tape measure to measure your work so that you know that you are working within gauge. Let's begin. We are going to start with our slip knot and we are going to loosely chain 62 stitches. Now that we have a chain of 62 chains, we're ready to begin row one. For row one, we are going to work a double crochet in the third, one, two, three, the third chain from the hook and in each chain across. So go ahead and finish that row. At the end of round one, you should have 60 double crochets and I'm not including the turning chain in that stitch count. I'm just counting the actual double crochets. So 60 double crochets all the way across. Now we are ready for row number two. We are going to start with a chain two and we're going to double crochet in the first four stitches. Make sure you do not skip that first stitch. A lot of crocheters skip that first stitch. I do not because I don't like a gaping hole along the side here. And one other thing I should mention before I go too much further Sometimes people say I go way too fast and I do apologize if that is the case here. Um, crocheting has become like breathing to me and I sometimes forget to slow down, but you can slow me down. There's a little icon right around here on the computers. It looks like a little gear. If you click on that, you can actually control the playback speed. You can slow it down a lot or you can even speed it up should you get bored. Now on a cell phone, uh, both Android and the iPhone, I'm told, up in the upper right-hand corner. Now for the left-handed, it's going to be on the opposite side. It's going to be over here, and the, the sprocket uh, gear thing is going to be over here on the computer. But up in the upper right-hand corner for most of you, you'll see three vertical dots if you click on that. And once you click on that, you will be able to adjust the playback speed. Um, and I hope that helps you so that, you know, if you get upset, if I go too fast, just go ahead and adjust it, slow me down, and we should all be friends again. All right, so after we do those four double crochets, we are going to work our little cable here. We're going to skip the next two stitches, and we're going to work a front post treble crochet. And a treble crochet, you simply bring the hook around the body of the stitch like you're giving it a belt, and then you just complete the stitch as normal. There are nothing to be afraid of with these post stitches. Yeah, they do look fancy, but never be afraid of a fancy stitch, especially with my videos, because I love to demystify them immediately so that you are empowered to make some beautiful things here. 
after working those two front post trebles, we're going to work in front of these stitches and we're going to front post treble crochet around the two stitches that we just skipped, starting with the first stitch that was skipped and then the second stitch that was skipped, just like that. Okay, and we're going to do this all the way across the row, double crochet in each of the next four stitches. That's three and four. And then we're going to do another cable. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Now working in front of these two stitches, we are going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And here's the other one. We're just giving it a little belt there. And that is going to be your repeat all the way across the row. After working this all the way across the row, you should have four stitches left. Go ahead and work a double crochet in each of the last four stitches. Do not work in the turning chain. And you should still maintain a 60 stitch count. Now, a lot of times in written patterns, if you do not see a stitch count at the end of the row, it's because it's not necessary because the stitch count has not changed. Okay, so for row number three, we're gonna turn, we're gonna chain two, and I'm going to take a minute to instruct you here for all of the rows from this point on. Whenever you have the back side facing you, and this is the back side, you are going to work half double crochets in the double crochet. So we'll go ahead and work a half double crochet in the first four stitches. And when we get to the cabling, we're going to work back post double crochets. So we're going to have four back post double crochets worked over those crossing of the cables or those cables that we made in row number two. And that is the repeat for row number three. I'll do it for you one more time. Half double crochets in each of the next four stitches and a half double crochet. For those of you who have never made one before, is very much like a double crochet, except you just have one motion and pull through all three loops on the hoop, or on the uh, hook rather. Um, and then after that, we're going to do four back post double crochets. And that is the repeat all the way across. Let me go ahead and finish these four stitches. And this is what it looks like from the back side. And I'll give you a little peek at the front side. You can see how that helps to fully develop those cables. So go ahead and finish that all the way across the row. At the end of the row, just work a half double crochet in each of the last four stitches. And do not work in the turning chain. All right, let's go ahead and turn and that's completing three rows. Now we're ready to work row number four, which is actually a repeat of row number two. We're gonna chain two. Now with the front side facing, we are going to be working double crochets again. So we work double crochets in each of those first four stitches. And once we get to the cable, we're going to cross the cables again. Skip two stitches, front post, double crochet in the first two stitches, or actually the next two stitches, we skip the first two. Now working in front of these two stitches, we're going to front post treble crochet in each of these two stitches that we skipped. Okay, just like that. And that is our repeat. I'll go ahead and repeat it for you one more time. Double crochet, the taller stitch, double crochet with the front side facing, and the next four stitches. 
after we do that we're going to come to our cable let me go ahead and do that one again i did not like the way that entered there sometimes if the yarn splits i want to make sure that i do it just right there we go we skip the next two stitches on this cable we're going to front post treble crochet in the next the next two stitches now working in front of the last two stitches we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped just like that and that is going to be our repeat I'll go ahead and show it to you that is going to be our repeat all the way across the row when you get to the end work four double crochets let me show you four double crochets in the last four stitches to begin row five it's actually a repeat of row number three we're going to chain two remember i said that with the back side facing you're going to work half double crochets so we work half double crochets in each of those first four stitches three and four and then we're going to work back post double crochets across each of those next post four post stitches which are the cable section and that is the repeat all the way across four half double crochets Four, and then four back post double crochets over those post stitches from the previous row so go ahead and work that all the way across and then when you get to the end of the row make sure that you work four half double crochets in those last four stitches okay this is what you should have after five rows now row six is where we start to begin the lattice work we're going to double crochet remember now we have the front side facing so we're going to work double crochets in the first two stitches we're going to skip the next two stitches and now we're going to front post treble crochet in these two stitches right here so we're going to front post treble okay now this is where it gets a little tricky when you have to kind of pay attention now we're going to work in the top loops of these two stitches that we just worked in so that would be this loop here in this loop here now another way to double check that is where we skip these two stitches and we are not going to work in them at all but we're going to be making up the difference by working in these two stitches both as front post stitches and working in the top loop uh, all that to say the stitch count will not change for this row so we work double crochets behind those two stitches okay so we've worked essentially work those stitches two times I know I'm being redundant but I just want to be as clear as possible now the next two stitches which are post stitches we're going to work in the top loops of those working double crochets in those two loops now we're going to go back and we're going to work front post treble over this stitch and then over this stitch okay so we are using those stitches twice in a sense and this is going to make up the difference for the stitches that we are going to skip okay so we have worked those now we're going to skip the next four stitches one two three four and then we're going to front post treble in the two stitches here which are the post stitches i know this may sound a little complicated well, once you see what I'm doing I think it will make more sense in just a second okay so so far you see what I'm doing now just like we did over here we're going to work in the top loops of these two stitches that we just worked and if you're not sure where those start 
remember that we skipped four stitches one two three four so the top loop is right here so that's one working double crochets and two okay so you can see that now we're going to work that I'll do that one more time for you double crochet in the next two stitches and again this is working in the tops of these um, that were the post stitches from the last row and now we work treble crochets in those same two stitches one and two and that is going to be your repeat all the way across the row after working this all the way across the row we skip the last or the next two stitches and we double crochet in the last two stitches let me show you what you should have all the way across the row you should have seven cables started I should have said that earlier but I'll add that in there now okay now we are ready to turn and we are ready to start row number seven we're going to chain two and yes we're going to do half double crochets in the top loops of the first two stitches that's one and two and wherever you have the post stitches from the other side we are going to work back post double crochets over those so back post double crochet over the next two stitches now we're going to half double crochet in the next four stitches three and four and then over the next four stitches we're going to work a back post double crochet and that is going to be the repeat all the way across the row I'll do it for you one more time I'll finish these four back post double crochets go ahead and show that to you so this is just at the beginning and at the end of the row the row so we did four half double crochets four back post double crochets and that is the repeat four half double crochets and then we're going to do four back post double crochets one two and three and four so go ahead and work that all the way across and I will show you the ending of this row that brings us to the last two stitches and we're going to work a back post double crochet over the next two stitches that are those post stitches from the previous row and then a half double crochet in the last two stitches and that ends the row let's go ahead and see what you should have at this point so it should be more defined now to begin row number eight we're going to chain two and we do have the front side facing which means we're going to be working double crochets so we double crochet in the first two stitches and now we are going to work front post treble crochets in the next two stitches right here one and two now we're going to work double crochets in the next four stitches one two three four now this begins the repeat actually with the four double crochets and then we come to the four post stitches we're going to skip the next two stitches front post treble crochet in the next two stitches working in front of the last two stitches the last two stitches just worked we're going to front post treble crochet and the two stitches that we skipped so go ahead and do those two stitches and that is your repeat all the way across I'll do the repeat one more time we're going to double crochet 
in the next four stitches. These would be the half double crochets we worked from the last row. And then the next four stitches, which are the post stitches, we're going to skip the next two front post treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of the last two stitches here, we're going to front post treble crochet in the two stitches that we just skipped. So go ahead and repeat that all the way across the row and I'll show you how to end the row. At the end of the row, we're going to work a front post treble crochet over the last two post stitches. And then a double crochet in the last two stitches of the row. And this is what you should have all the way across the row. Now we're going to work row number nine, which is actually a repeat of row number seven. We're going to chain two. Now remember, we're going back to half double crochets with the back side facing. I know that's redundant, but I have forgotten to do that several times while working on this project. So go ahead and start with half double crochets in the first two stitches and then back post double crochets over the next two post stitches from the previous row. And this is going to be your repeat all the way across. Half double crochet in the next four stitches. And then back post double crochet over the next four post stitches. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. Now to work row number 10, we're going to chain two and we're back to working double crochets in these stitches. So we work double crochets in the first two stitches of the row, work a front post treble in these two post stitches, and now we're going to work double crochets in the next four stitches. And that brings us to the first crossing of the cable. We are going to skip the first two stitches. We'll treble crochet in the next two stitches. Working in front of the last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we just skipped. And that is our repeat. I'll do it one more time. Double crochet in the next four stitches. Oh, let me try that one again. Oh, let's try it a third time. Well, maybe a fourth. So you're not alone. I sometimes have struggles with getting the stitches the way I'd like them to be. Skip the next two stitches, front post treble in the next two stitches, working in front of the last two stitches, go ahead and front post treble in the two skipped stitches. And that is your repeat all the way across the row. At the end of this row, we work front post treble crochets in those last two post stitches, and then work double crochets in the last two stitches of the row. And this is what you should have. 
go. Let's go ahead and turn. Now we're ready to start row 11, which is the same as row number 7. We're going to start with the chain 2, and with the back side facing, we have half double crochets now. Work those first two stitches. We get to those two post stitches. We're going to work back post double crochets. And we get to these next four stitches we're going to work, and this is going to be our repeat across four half double crochets. And then we're going to work four back post double crochets. And that's the fourth one there. And that is your repeat. So go ahead and repeat that all the way across the row. That brings us to the last four stitches. And we work a back post double crochet over those two post stitches. And then a half double crochet in the last two stitches of the row. And this is what you should have after working 11 rows of this pattern. Okay, now we're about to work row number 12. We're going to chain two and we're going to double crochet. Now we have the front side facing. We're back to double crochets in the first four stitches. One, two, and yes, in the top of these two um, post stitches as well. And just to give you a little preview, we're actually going to bring this, these front post stitches back into this direction. Now we're going to work over these last two stitches again with front post stitches, front post treble crochets, one, and two. We're going to skip the next four stitches, one, two, three, four. And we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches, and this should be the two post stitches in the next cable. So you can see what's happening here. We have closed that diamond by doing this. Now working in the tops of these two stitches that we just worked, remember we skipped four, so we can count back here. One, two, three, four. So this is the next stitch that we're going to work in right here. One double crochet there and then in the last stitch. Okay, so I wanted to show you. So we have worked those two stitches two different times. And again, your stitch count will remain the same. Now we're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, and we're going to work the last two stitches here again with front post trouble. So we're going to come back here and we're going to front post trouble in those two stitches. And that is pretty much going to be the repeat all the way across. I'll go ahead and show this to you again. We're going to skip the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. And we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches, which are going to be those stitches that are part of the post stitches. Now we're going to work behind, we're going to work in the top, we're behind these two stitches, but it's going to be in the top of these two stitches that we just worked. And that's the first of the two. And again, we've skipped these four, one, two, three, four. We will not work in those at all. Work a double crochet there and a double crochet in this other top of that post stitch. And we go ahead and double crochet in the next two stitches. One, two, again, these are those post stitches that we're working on top of. And then we're going to work front post trebles in these two stitches again. So in the stitches that we just worked. So front post treble there and in that next post stitch. And that, again, is the repeat. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. I'm going to show you how to work the end 
of this row, we're going to skip the next four stitches like we've been doing. One, two, three, four. Front post treble in those last two post stitches. Now working behind these two stitches, we're going to again be working in the tops of these two stitches that we just worked. Go ahead and work double crochets in those stitches. If you're not exactly sure where to put those, remember that we skipped one, two, three, four stitches here. That is always helpful to me. And then we're going to double crochet in those last two stitches. And this ends row number 12. Now we're ready to go on to row 13 and for row 13 we are simply going to repeat row number 3. In a case for row 13 we're going to chain 2. We are going to half double crochet in those first 4 stitches and then we're going to back post double crochet in the next four stitches, these would be those four post stitches. Okay, and that is pretty much the repeat all the way across the row. I'll do it for you one more time. Half double crochet in the next four stitches. and back post double crochet in the next four stitches. And I will show you the end of this row once I get, once I get to that section. After working that all the way across, we simply half double crochet in the last four stitches of the row. This is what you should have at the completion of 13 rows. Okay, so you notice the, the diamonds here. We're going to work this pattern until we have five diamonds this size in a row. And what you're going to do is for rows 14 through 61, you're going to repeat rows 2 through 13 four more times. If you need stitch support, I'm going to go ahead and put a time mark right down at the bottom of the screen there. You can go back to that time mark in the video and repeat as often as you need rows 2 through 13. After that, you're going to repeat rows 3 through 5 one more time. That would be for rows 62 through 64. After you do that, we're going to work a perimeter round. So go ahead and finish through rows 64 and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, after finishing those rows, let me show you. This would be the beginning and this is what we should have. I will show you um, a better view shortly as we get ready to put these together. But you should have five of these diamonds in a row or actually in a line. Okay, we should have approximately seven diamonds across on most of these rows. Okay, so now at this point, we need to put a perimeter um, round all the way around these squares. It's going to make connecting these squares so much easier. So we were working with the back side facing on that last row. Go ahead and chain one and turn. And you need to be having the front side facing you for this round. It's going to be a simple single crochet round. So what we're going to do, we're going to work single crochets in each stitch all the way across until we get to the corner and then I'll show you what to do on the turn. So simply even even with the post stitches just work right in the top loops of every stitch all the way across the row. Just like that. After working single crochets all the way across, we're going to chain two and then work another single crochet in that same space where you worked that last single crochet. This is after turning 90 degrees. Now we're going to work one single crochet in this row end 
and for the double crochet go ahead and work two single crochets for that row end and that's what we're going to alternate all the way across this row working across the row ends one single crochet it should be in that chain two space and then two in the double crochet all the way across so go ahead and do that should look like that after having worked all the way across the row ends I have 98 single crochets so now it was time to form another corner but we do want to keep the stitch count consistent as we go so we're going to chain two and I'm going to put the next and the first stitch working along the bottom right here Okay, so notice that the corner does look a little bit different. We're not working in the same place, but we're working over here opposite the first stitch of the foundation row. So we're going to work in each chain opposite the first, first row of stitches that we worked. And if you're not sure where to put your hook, find where that stitch is and put it in the same place. And notice you're gonna be working over two strands if you worked your chain the way I did. And your hook should go right in where it needs to go and go ahead and work those single crochets all the way across. And just like the other end, you should have 60 single crochets worked across this end. So go ahead and complete that row or that, that section of the round. So once we get to that corner, I've gone ahead and chained two and go ahead and work a single crochet in the same place as that last single crochet and then work a single crochet in that next stitch, two single crochets in the next and then one in the next space, two single crochets in the next and then one in the next space. So go ahead and work that all the way across all the row ends on the other side of this panel. After working those single crochets all the way across that brings us to the corner and I want to show you the last two stitches. I'm going to work a single crochet in that last row end and then one in the same place where that first single crochet was worked chain two, one, two, and I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that first single crochet of the round, just like that. I'm going to give a little bit of a tug and give it a chain and a pull. And I'm going to find my scissors, which I left right over here nearby. And I'm going to cut the string, leaving a generous strand so that it would make it easier for me to hide that loose strand once I finish my project. Okay, so now we have a completed panel. The measurements, I'll go ahead and give you the measurements. Before I worked the perimeter round, the measurements were approximately 16 and a half inches wide by 29 inches long. Okay, the measured size of this now is approximately 17 inches wide by 30 inches long. If you're within an inch or half an inch of that, that you should be quite within parameters to, to move ahead and be fine. So go ahead and make another panel just like this one. Now we're ready to put these panels together. I have two and they look like this. And they are approximately the same size. I haven't blocked anything. I may not even have much of a need to do that once I because uh, I have a few things I need to do first, including adding more crochet um, to the final touch. But let me go ahead and show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one of these panels, and there should be a diagram for you to see. Um, I'll, I'll try to put one right here in the video in case there isn't one in the written pattern. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and watch what I do. The right side is up. Um, but I just wanted you to know that when you slip stitch these together, as I'm going to instruct you to, um, make sure that the back side is facing you. Okay, you don't want this seam to be showing. So go ahead with the right side up and fold it about this far over. Okay, can you see that? It's about, um, maybe about 
little less than a third the way over. This is just an estimate right now. It, it's not super critical yet. Now take this other panel. Um, also, you might want to make sure um, that as you do this, that the first row, the foundation row, is down here on the bottom. So we can try to be consistent about this. Um, and this is my foundation row here. So I'm going to want this to be down so that it's, um, you know, kind of kind of similar. Um, and, but, you know, if, if you accidentally do this the opposite way, don't worry about it because I really don't think it's going to matter that much since the pattern is pretty symmetrical. All right, so we're going to place this one right here. Okay, kind of line it up here. Again, this is not lined up perfectly. Don't worry about that. Okay, this is the important part right here where the two corners of these panels come together. You have a chain two corner here and a chain two corner here. This is where you're going to start slip stitching this together. Now you can pin this together or you can use something like this. This is called a knit clip and I'll, I'll try to put a link in the video description so that you see um, where you could get these should you be interested. Um, they, they save family's feet from finding your pins in places where they shouldn't be later. And so if you're looking for more family unity when you craft, these nitpicks may help you <laughs> keep the peace. Well, anyway, so I'm going to put this right in the corner. Now I'm just going to do this kind of, kind of loosely so I do it quickly for you. But in reality, when I'm actually slip stitching this together, I'm going to slip stitch these stitch by stitch together. Okay. And, but right now I'm just going to just show you how to construct this poncho. So I put these knit clips like this and then all the way across until when you get to this side you're going to be slip stitching through a stitch here and the chain two corner here and that will be the last slip stitch that you work on this side. Okay now I'm going to pick this up okay and carefully just flip it like that, okay? Now here's the extra side here. We're simply gonna fold it and line it up with this other panel. Again, line up the two places where you have the chain two corners, okay? And then stitch by stitch, line it up carefully. Again, I'm not doing it carefully since because I'm doing it quickly for the video. I'm going to do it very carefully when I stitch this together and I'll, I'll show you that in just a second. So I'm going to line this up about like this, okay? Now once you do that, and when I pick this up to show you, you should have the shape like this for your poncho. Of course, we're not finished yet. We are going to be working um, some ribbing stitches across the bottom, and we get to do that luscious collar um, with the fur yarn in just a bit. So this is what you're going to do. So again, you're going to slip stitch, working through those two chain two corners, and I will show you that, and then slip stitch all the way to this portion here. And then you're going to do that again onto the other side. We're going to slip stitch right down here starting at the corners and then work all the way across. And you can see this is why it's very important that you have the same number of stitches on all sides of your poncho panels. Okay, let's go ahead and slip stitch these together. Now we're ready to slip stitch both of these edges together. I'm just gonna show you one edge, but you're gonna need to just make sure that you do both of them for this poncho. So I'm going to go ahead and start in the chain two space right there. And I'm going to make my little slip knot. Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to just simply pull that through. And now I'm going to look at the next two stitches. I'm going to work through both loops. That one. And that would be our first stitch right there. And just a simple slip stitch all the way across is what we're going to do until you get to the chain two corner of one of these panels. So go ahead and do that. Now, as you do this, be sure that you're doing this um, not 
too tightly, okay? Slip stitch generally, I'm gonna pull this one out, it's getting in the way. Um, generally, they tend to be a tighter stitch. So you wanna make sure that it's not real, real, real tight, because then this is gonna be pulled too much. Now, it's, you don't want it to be too loose either, so just a very comfortable, um, a very uh, comfortable tension, you know, much like the stitches that you're working these over, okay? Now, if you tend to do this super, super tight, you may want to actually bump up to a larger size hook as you do this. Yeah, most of you will not need to do that, but just be assured that, you, that you're not pulling these too tight. There should be just a very comfortable tension just like that. So go ahead and finish both of those seams. I will show you what it looks like to fasten off at the end of this one. After working this all the way across, we come to that chain two space and we just work one more. Let me move that strand out of the way. One more slip stitch and then go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and then I'm going to I'm going to carefully cut this strand and then pull it on through and then just give it another tug. Okay, and then we're eventually we'll hide these loose strands before we do the collar. But go ahead and finish the other seam just like this one. Okay, once you finish sewing these seams, make sure you turn the garment with the right side out. Okay, we have just a little bit more to go. Now let me show you my seam. Okay, you can see that right there. It hasn't been blocked yet. We can actually block this at the very end if we feel like it should need it. I think it might be nice to block this just so that the seam lays flat and we will do that at the end. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn the poncho and I'm actually gonna start near one of these seams, okay? Um, actually, let's go ahead and we're going to join our yarn at the seam, at any seam. And I'm going to join it right here in this first chain two space. Let's go ahead and do a slip knot. And we're going to chain two. Now this chain two does not count in the stitches that we're about to add. And this is going to be the ribbing that we're going to work all the way around the base of the poncho. Okay, so we're going to just work one double crochet in each stitch along. So now I started out by working a double crochet in this chain two space. And then in the next chain two space, I've worked another one. So from here on out, we're just going to work one double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and work this until you get to the first corner. This would be one of the points of the poncho. Okay, once you get to the corner, and again, you will do this in both of the corners of this poncho, you're gonna work 12 double crochets in that space. I know that's gonna seem like a lot, and it's gonna seem very tight for now, for this round. But let me explain why I'm doing it this way. We are not going to be increasing stitches in this particular place as we come around for the following rounds. So that's why we need to have 12 of these right now. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, 11, 12. Now let me show you something else. You're gonna be careful. Make sure that you don't skip this stitch. This is the first stitch. It's almost like hidden now because of all those extra stitches. That's the first stitch going down the other side. So go ahead and then just complete, complete this round. And so it's gonna look you know, a little wavy right now, but that is A-OK -okay because as we add the next few rounds, it is going to settle out quite nicely and will be a nice corner on your poncho. After working this all the way around, let's go ahead and work that last stitch. We're gonna join 
with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round. Now remember, it's the double crochet, it is not the chain two. The chain two does not count in our stitch count. Okay, so we do one with a slip stitch. We do not turn, we're gonna work the remainder three rounds this way, and we're gonna work it with the right side facing. We're gonna chain two. We're going to work a front post, double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet, front post, double crochet, and then a back post, double crochet. And that is your repeat all the way around the poncho. Now remember when you come to the corners, let's see if I can find the corner. Here we go. Make sure that you work front post, back post, front post, back post, over all 12 of these stitches. Okay, so go ahead and work that and when you get to, to the beginning here, when we come all the way around, we're gonna work, join with a slip stitch just like we did to the top of the loop of the first stitch of the round. And then again, we will do front post double crochet over the front post, back post double crochets over the back post, all the way around. So three more rounds. After working this all the way around, go ahead and join with a slip stitch and then give it a chain, give it a tug, and then go ahead and clip it, and pull it on through. And this is what you should have along the ribbing edge. Now, if you want to make this ribbing longer, you can certainly add additional rows to your heart's delight. So that is what we have. So we are finished with the bottom ribbing. Now let's take a look at the collar. And just to show you again for the collar, I'm using the yarn, the Go for Faux. So I'm also gonna bump up two sizes for this crochet hook. I'm going up to a K, which is a US 10.5 or 6.50 millimeters. Okay, now we're ready to work around the collar and using this wonderful faux fur yarn. Let's go ahead and start with a slip knot. I know this is gonna be really hard. Let me try that again. This is not the easiest stuff to work with, but it, it it's not as difficult as it may seem. All right, so go ahead and we have our slip knot. And I know it's gonna be harder for you to see because of the furry nature, but we are just gonna be working the regular stitches we're used to. Go ahead and chain two and go ahead and work a double crochet in that same space. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna work a double crochet, like I just worked in the first space, and in the next two spaces, which are here and here, we're gonna work a decrease, which is we wrap the hook, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and do that again. Yarn over, stick the hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. You should have one, two, three loops on the hook, although they are fuzzy, and pull through all three. Okay, now we're gonna do a double crochet in the next space, and in the next space, we're gonna work a decrease. And then do that in the next. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. And then a double crochet in the next space. This is gonna draw the collar inward. So go ahead and work that all the way around the collar, around. Now as we come around, we have two stitches left. You may only have one, but in my case I have two. I'm gonna go ahead and work another double crochet decrease over those two stitches. Yarn over, pull through three. Now I'm gonna join with this slip stitch right here, and this is the chain two that we worked at the beginning of the round, and just pull it through, slip stitch. We're not gonna turn, we're gonna keep the same side facing. We're gonna chain two. Now I'm gonna have you mark something Okay, right here near the seam, this is where 
one corner was, go ahead and we're going to mark that with a little, you can use a, a stitch marker or, or, you know, anything, even a piece of contrasting yarn, just so that you know um, that that is near where the seam is. Find the other side where the seam is right here. This is where it kind of dipped down when we um, connected these. What we're trying to do now is we're going to try to eliminate some of that and we're going to mark it right like that. Okay, now as we work the second round, I wanted to explain some things. We're not actually going to try to work in the tops of the loops because um, th that's going to be almost impossible and I have a better idea. This is going to work just as well. Okay, in between the stitches, you can't see it, but you can feel it with the nerve endings of your fingers. So you can see like in between the stitches here. Okay, now some of these stitches are decreases, so you know that you can feel it's an extra thick stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to work in between the stitches that we just worked, but we're going to start off with a decrease at the corner here where we had marked. So we're going to actually crochet three double crochets together and I'll show you how to do that. Yarn over and near where we joined, we're going to pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we're going to go to the next area, yarn over, insert in between those stitches, yarn over and pull through two. Now we have three loops on the hook. We're going to do that one more time and this is where we had that decrease. So we'll go over here, yarn over, pull through two. Now you should have four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four. That's going to help to eliminate that dip in that corner section. Now we are simply going to work in between the stitches all the way around. Well actually to the next place where we have our stitch marked right over here. Okay, so in between the stitches we find that space. So go ahead and work that all the way to the next place that is marked. So that brings us right here and we are about a stitch, let's see, the, I'm feeling with my fingers here. We're one stitch away so we're going to take this out and we're going to work a three double crochets together over the next three spaces. So one and the other one is here, two and right here, three. And pull through all four loops and then continue working a double crochet in between those stitches until you get to the first double crochet of the round. At the end of the round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to this, to the chain two right here, chain two space. Okay, and we're going to chain two. Now, if you want your collar to end here, that would be fine, but I'm going to make this one a little bit thicker. Okay, so I am going to continue with another decrease here in the front over the next three stitches. working in between the stitches like we did before. And then working one double crochet in between the stitches to the other side that's near the seam. And I guess I should probably mark that spot. And in case you're worried, all you need to do is find the seam, which is on the other side right here. And I can easily Yes, I can find that spot right there. So I'm going to work around this spot right here. And again, this is just pulling that in so that it's not, um, you know, so that it just fits better around the neck. Okay, I've removed my little marker and I'm going to go ahead. The marker was actually 
right around here. So I removed it one stitch before then. And I'm going to do those three double crochets together again. Well, I can get it through. There we go. Yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook. And then continue working those double crochets in between the stitches the rest of the way around. So after working this all the way around, we are going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain two at the beginning of the round, just like that, and give it a chain, give it a tug, and we're going to carefully, I can get my little knife here, I'm going to carefully cut this. I'm going to leave a generous amount, just like that. And then we're going to pull this on through and give that a tug. And so now we are practically finished. Now, before I show you the final product, I wanted to show you one more thing. And that is how to hide all of these loose strands that you see all over the poncho on the inside. Okay. So hopefully you've brought them all to one side of the work. I probably could have mentioned that earlier. But let me go ahead and I'm going to show you how you can hide these inside your work in a quick and efficient manner. So I'm actually going to thread both of these strands of this knot at the same time. You can do one at a time or you can do them both together. And this is why you needed, you know, some longer threads here. So I'm just going to carefully run these into the stitches. Again, notice that I am working on the back side of the work because you don't want these stitches to show, or, or the threads rather. Okay, I'm going to run it down this side and give it a nice pull. And that looks good. And now I'm going to actually come and run it up the other side. I like to kind of go opposite where I can because it kind of gives a kind of a counter tug and it keeps it from you know just pulling out okay I think that's pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off and it's probably best that you use a pair of scissors this is just all that I have on at the moment and then give it a little cut there and be very careful that you don't cut your stitches and I've pulled that and that looks that's good nice and hidden Oh, I got about a dozen or so more to take care of, but I'll go ahead and do that and then I will show you the final product. Well, I hope you enjoyed making the lattice cable poncho with me. If you did, if you could please give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. That way you don't miss any of the offerings I have coming your way. God bless. Bye-bye.